Okay, class. Classes. Today's A day. This will also cover for B day. Um, this was the homework assignment assigned to you regarding derivatives of exponential functions. And so I'll pick a couple of these homework problems to do first. Then we're going to move on to day 24 lecture. I haven't received a whole lot of feedback, so I don't know which of these would have been the toughest for you. So I'll just have to take a look at them and see which ones would I have wanted done. Uh, number one, product rule. Uh, with chain rule. Well, actually not really, just product rule will work. Number two... E to the U, D, U. No, pretty, pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, interesting thing of three. Let's do three. Because uh, it has a natural log in it. And, Let's see what's happening. Uh, I'm a little concerned because I thought that day 24 was going to talk about... Oh, no, we already did natural log. Uh, if I remember that if y equals natural log of u... Yeah, I lectured that. y prime is du over u. And that that is only when we're talking about the natural log, which is your base e. Okay? So let's do it anyway h prime of x. I already forgot pretty much what I lectured the last time. So bear with me, guys. Uh, the derivative of e to the u, and all of this is u, would be, h prime would be e to the u du. So what I need to do is copy the original problem because that's what e to the u is, e to the x, ln of x. But now I need to multiply that by the derivative of u. And so u was all of this bad boy, which is going to require a product rule. The first, which is x, times the natural log of ln of x. Well, the derivative of ln of x is du over u. So in this case, the u for the natural log is just x. So du over u, that becomes just 1 over x. Plus the second times the derivative of x, which is 1. So the final answer is e to the x, ln of x x times 1 over x is just a 1. And then plus ln of x times 1 is just ln of x. I'm going to leave that as my answer. Okay, so that was a good one. Uh, 4, just a big product rule. There's your first, there's your second. Uh, 5, natural log of u. If this is my u, e to the 2x plus 1, then du will have to be the derivative of this from left to right, which is e to the u, e to the u, du, e to the 2x, times the derivative of 2x, which is 2, time, plus the derivative of 1, which is 0. So there's your du. Some people choose to write it like this. And 6, same thing. Well, this is my u. So what I need is du over u. So do the derivative of this over itself. Over itself. Minus 2x. So you just have to figure out what the derivative of 3 minus 2x is. Well, that's minus 2. So it's already done for you. Got another one done for you. And these last four, <clears throat> do my, for seven, do your rewrite. 
Uh, well, let's do natural log of 5x minus 2 to the 1 half power. So the only difference is number 7 is going to require chain rule. Okay, because there's some stuff inside. So I'm still going to need du over u. And the u is the same problem. It's This whole thing is u. I'll rewrite it back as the square root of 5x minus 2. It looks prettier. But now you have to do the derivative of this. 1 half times this to the negative 1 half times the derivative of this, which is 5. So 5 halves times 5x minus 2 to the negative half, which is going to bring it downstairs. So some magic happens there. All right. Quotient rule. Quotient rule. Product rule. All right. Let's move on to the notes for uh, day 24. Okay. It, it looks like it's the same thing. Uh, we're doing derivatives, exponential, and logarithmic. But the difference is we're not using base E. Base is other than E. All right. Now, it's not a big deal. Because remember if y was equal to, let's do uh, e to the u. We learned that y prime was e to the u du. But that's only really half the story. The truth was that if y equals to any base to the u, any number, not just e, the answer would have been y prime would be a to the u du. Looks very familiar, but there's one more step times the natural log of the base. Well, how did that apply to this? Does that definition work when the base was e? y prime would be keep e to the u, do the du, but now multiply by the natural log of the base, natural log of the base e. Natural log of E is 1. So it still came out to the same answer. But if it wasn't base E, you would have natural log of some number multiplied by what we normally had done. Piece of cake, right? So what did he do here? Okay, he's going to have us prove it. Uh, well, find the derivative using the rule from the previous lesson. I just did that right here with this problem. I was just showing you. So f prime of x would be e to the u, which is cosine of 2x, times the derivative of u, which would be using chain rule multiplied by 2, so it would be a negative sine of 2x times 2. So I'm going to write negative 2 sine of 2x. And there's my answer. All of that multiplied by e to the cosine of 2x. Now he says do the same problem using the new rule. Well, using the new rule, f prime of x would be e to the cosine of 2x times the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of 2x times 2, negative 2 sine of 2x times the derivative, uh, or no, times the natural log of the base, natural log of e. You see that goes to 1, so it's the same answer. Let's do one that is not base e, 
f prime of x will be, just like e to the u du, it'll be 4 to the u du, this time times natural log of 4. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, product rule, product rule with uh, a base 2, not base e. So g prime of x is the first times the derivative of the second, which is going to require the natural log of 2 to be... Oop, I don't want to use that. I want to use this. Natural log of 2 will be definitely part of the answer because it's base 2. So it's 2, 2 to the x, that's a to the u, times du, times 2, plus the second, 2 to the 2x, times the derivative of the first, which is 2x. Now, what can I do to make this look cleaner? I could factor out 2, 2 to the x. 2, two to the 2x, I mean. I could factor out a 2x. I'll put that in front just because it makes it look easier. That leaves, I definitely have an x and a natural log of 2. So I'll put natural log of 2x. I think that's everything there. Because I already used up one of the x's. I already used up 2 to the 2, to the two x. And I already pulled out that 2. Plus, well, it looks like I pulled the whole thing out. So, 2x, yep, 1. You can always correct me if I'm wrong. All right, h prime. This is my... A is 5. This is my U right here. So I keep the 5 and keep the U. But then I multiply by the derivative of U, which is simply a 2. You can put it here, or you can put it out front. Whoop. 5, 2x, minus 3. Just do not, do not multiply the 5 times the 2. It's, you can't do that. This is the... They're not like bases. They don't go together. Nothing fancy. Uh, product rule. P prime. The first times the derivative of the second. And that is the A is 3 and the U is negative 2x. So I'm going to keep the 3 to the negative 2x times the derivative of negative 2x, which is negative 2, times the natural log of the base, natural log of 3, plus the second, 3 to the negative 2x, times the derivative of the first, which is 1. There's a pretty good answer. I could clean it up by pulling out that 3 to the negative 2x. That would leave me with a negative 6. No, 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 not silly me. That's a natural log. I thought it was a parenthesis. It's a negative 2, natural log of 3 times x. Negative 2 with the x, natural log of 3, plus the 1. Because I pulled out this. That should give me 1. Oh, that was not, not, not too bad. Uh, most of those answers are probably close enough for the government. Continue. Let's see. They got a lot of room for this one. This must, must be going to take some extra work. Yeah, it's another product rule, but there's a cosine, and then there's uh, probably requiring a little bit of chain rule in there. So here goes. F prime of theta is the first 2 to the negative theta times the derivative of the second. Derivative of the second will be derivative of cosine is negative sine. Keep the pi theta. 
they go in and do the derivative of pi theta, pi, plus the second, which is cosine of pi theta. Then you see how the author did, I mean, he, he does seem to put the argument in parentheses, not a bad idea. So there's the second times the derivative of the first, which means I a to the u du, so I keep the two, negative theta, and the derivative of negative theta is, well, how am I going to write that? That's going to be, uh, it's the same thing as a negative x, it'd be a negative 1, right? So, negative 1. That means this negative could actually be applied to here if you wanted to. So when I clean this up, what can I factor out? I definitely can factor out a 2 to the negative theta. Uh, can I factor out the pi? No. Can I factor out uh, cosine? No. So all I can factor out looks to me like the 2 to the negative theta leaving negative pi sine of pi theta minus, because that minus is still here. I probably could have pulled out the minus, to be honest with you. Let me do that in a second. Minus, I pulled this out, so I'm still left with the cosine of pi theta. So what I'll say is, since I, I see it now, I didn't see it a second ago, is I could have pulled out the negative 2, negative theta, which doesn't make the problem or answer any more better. But it's just a thought. All thoughts matter. Okay, P quotient rule. I love how we just keep reviewing, reviewing, reviewing all those basic rules we had before Christmas. F prime of theta... F prime of x, the bottom, times the derivative of the top. Okay, there's the bad boy there. It's a exponential with not base e, so it's going to be a to the u du. So I keep the 3 to the 5x, multiplied by the derivative of 5x, which is 5, multiplied by the natural log of the base, which is natural log of 3. Minus the top, 3 to the 5x, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, all divided by x squared. The, ho, ho. How can I clean that up? Not a whole lot. I don't even know if it's worth the time, to be honest with you. Uh, the only thing you could do is factor out a 3 to the 5x if you wanted to. 3 to the 5x, that leaves a... 5x natural log of 3, 5x natural log of 3, minus 1, all over x squared. The only benefit of doing that is if you had to find uh, max and mins and you had to find critical numbers, the numerator had to be factored in order to set each equal to 0. So that's still a very good skill to do. You might be wondering, why would I do it if I already said the answer looked pretty good? You never know. Quotient rule again. H prime of x is the bottom. 2 to the 3x times the derivative of the top. 2x minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is going to require the new thing we learned today. A to the u du would be 2 to the 3x times the 3, times the natural log of 2, because it's not base e, all divided by 2 to the 3x, all squared. 2 to the 3x, all squared, which becomes a 6x if you really want to. That I may not care about doing, but I will factor out the top. They both have 2 to the 3x. They both have uh, an x. They, they both do not have an extra 2. 
So I'm going to go factor out the 2 to the 3x, factor out an x. I'll put that in front. That leaves a 2. That's all that's left here. Right here, there's only a 2 left. Minus, I have an extra x and a natural log of 2. Oh, I have a 3 also. I didn't see that. So 3x natural log of 2 all over 2 to the 3x squared. Oh, do you see? Do you see what I see? Said the shepherd boy to the little lamb. The top and bottom both have a 2 to the 3x. The bottom happens to have two of them. So it's a good thing I didn't distribute the 2 and call that 6x because I might not have seen it. You could leave the answer as just an x times 2 minus 3x ln of 2 all over just a 2 to the 3x. That's pretty cool, if, I, if I'm right. I know some of you will let me know if I made a mistake. Last problem on the page. Is there another page? logarithmic? For what values of x would the graph of 2 to the negative 3x have a normal line whose slope is 2? All right, this is a very good problem. Normal means perpendicular to the tangent. Perpendicular to the tangent. So I need to have the slope of the tangent. Let's see, how is that going to be? By the way, he wants the slope of the normal, whose slope is 2. A normal slope is 2. That would mean that the tangent would have a slope of negative 1 half. So I need to do the derivative and set it equal to a negative half. That will be the place where the normal would be a slope of 2. So here it goes. P prime of x is going to be 2 to the negative 3x times negative 3 times natural log of 2. I need to set this equal... I need this slope to be a negative half. Okay, so I will multiply both. S well, let's see. What do I want to do? I need to get the 2 to the negative 3x by itself. It's already factored, so I'm just getting 2 to the negative 3x would have to be equal. Equal, let's see, uh, equal to the negative 1 over 2 divided by all of this, negative 3 natural log of 2. And let's see, the two negatives cancel out. 2 to the negative 3x will equal to a 1 over 6 natural log of 2. Now, not, I have to isolate the negative 3x, so I have to get rid of the base 2. The best way to do that is to go ahead and uh, multiply by the log, or not multiply, but log both sides base 2. What happens is this all cancels. That leaves two, uh, negative 3x equals to the log base 2 of 1 over 6 natural log of 2. Which is not a pretty answer. But now I divide both sides by a negative 3. The answer would be log base 2 of 1 over 6, natural log of 2, 
all of that divided by a negative three. If somebody would be so kind as to give me what the numerical approximation will be, I will give you extra credit. I don't want a key to the calculator, but please, somebody do it for me. You know, half pity to this old man stuck in bed. All right, enough of that one. Move on each afterwards. Yes, we're still... What do we do with logarithms that are not uh, base E? In other words, not natural logs, but any kind of logs. Recall what we said before about if y was the natural log of u, we said that y prime was natural log, I'm sorry, we said y prime is the derivative of u over u. But that's not entirely true. The true definition would be if y was any log of any base of u is what we're considering. So if y is any log, not just log base e, this is log base e, not just that one, but any of them, then, then what we'll say is y prime will be, check this out, du over u. Well, we did that before. But there's one little caveat. Instead of multiply by the log of the base, we divide by the natural log of the base. So it's basically the same. Does that apply to the original? Sure it does. If y equals to log base e of u, then y prime was technically du over u divided by the natural log of the base. The natural log of e is 1, so it's the same answer as du over u. So there's the secret, okay? And they want us to practice it, so here it goes. If f of x is natural log of sine of 3x, using the old-fashioned way, we said that f prime will be du, that's 3 times the cosine of 3x, using that chain rule already in my first step, divided by itself, sine of 3x, which is is pretty good answer. Uh, probably we would turn that into 3 cotangent of 3x, make it better. And the new way would have been the same thing. We would treat this as log base e of sine of 3x, and so f prime would be the 3 cosine of 3x divided by 3, not 3, just the sine of 3x times the natural log of e, which cancels out. Get the same answer. Let's practice a couple. Log base 2. So f prime will be du over u. There's my u. 4 over 4x times the natural log of the base as not e, so it's natural log of 2. Simplify that, 1 over x ln of 2. This is base 2, so g prime will be the derivative of a sine, which is cosine of x, over itself, sine of x. But don't forget to multiply by 
the natural log of 3 in the denominator, which means divide the whole thing by the natural log of the base. Most of us will leave this as a cotangent of x divided by natural log of 3. Log base 5 of cosine of 3x, h prime of x, the derivative of cosine with the 3 using the uh, chain rule, negative 3 sine of 3x all over cosine of 3x, natural log of 5 in the denominator. That's negative tangent of 3x over natural log of 5. Okay, get out of the trig for a minute. P prime of x is the derivative of 2 to the 3x. Oh, they're going to uh, give us both exponential non-base e and log non-base e. Or is it that creative? The derivative of 2 to the 3x is 2 to the 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3, times the natural log of 2. Isn't that clever? over itself, 2 to the 3x, times the natural log of the base of this log. And the base of that log, I think, is 10. Let me erase what I wrote up there so I can make sure. Yeah, it's log base 10. Isn't that interesting? And do you see how the... Uh, 2 to the 3x is in both, so it technically cancels. So it's 3 natural log of 2 divided by natural log of 10. Wait a minute, that's weird. How can that cancel to a constant? Let me double check. 2 to the 3x over let's see, 2 du 2 to the 3x times 3 times natural log of 2 over 2 to the 3x divided by natural log of I, wow I, that's I'm not that is really weird what I'm going to do is I'm going to use properties of logs to see if this is true. I'm double-checking my work. I'm going to rewrite this as P equals to the log of 2 plus... Oh, no, I can't do that. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It's like, hold on. Properties of logs. So let's see. I can move the 3x to the front. I call it log of 2. And, oh, yeah, that's just a constant, log of 2. So 2x was the exponent. I moved it to the front. 3x, I mean. Log of 2, log of the base. P prime should be 3 log of 2. Just a number. What did I get here? Well, I don't have just 3 log of 2. That's the problem. That's 3 log base. Oh, it's because... Oh, yeah, yeah, because I'm in log base 10 in the answer. And if I convert this, this is log base 10, would be 3... If I turn it to natural log... Natural log of 2 over natural log of 10. Yes, it works. I am convinced I'm right. Why did I doubt myself? I know I'm brilliant. Somebody that I, I respect and adore, they call me, uh, what do they call me? Iconic. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do a, well, you know what? Why am I working so hard when I do have properties of logs? I am iconic, because I just thought, why, why don't I just go back to my pre-cal for a minute and rewrite this as, 
on one half out front of log base 7 of x squared minus 1. Yeah, that is so much nicer to look at. You know how you can take that one half power, take it to the front of a log? I like it. All right, here goes. So k prime of x will be one half, and du over u would give me two x over two uh, over. I'm sorry, not two x, but over x squared minus one. All of that, but I have to divide by the base of that log, so it's natural log of seven down there, okay. And uh, that would be the answer. Could anything cancel? Yeah, the two, the two could cancel, boom, boom. So I have x over x squared minus one with this natural log of seven there. Try it the other way if you wanna treat this as you know a chain rule problem. If you can do it the other way and you can prove that it still works and agrees with this, extra credit to whoever the first person that sends it to me, which isn't really, I'll have to say the first person from second period, uh, I mean, sorry, the first person from A day, then the first person from the B day. Uh, I'm not using quotient rule on this inside junk. No way. You use quotient rule if you want for extra credit. But I'm going to do it as... Break this into log base 3 of 3x minus log base 3 of x minus 1. Sometimes you need to think smarter, not harder. Left to right, q prime of x will be du over u, 3 over 3x, natural log of 3, minus du over u for this piece, 1 over x minus 1, natural log of 3. What cancels? The 3's 1 over x ln of 3 minus 1 over x minus 1 ln of 3. Uh, that may not be exactly the same look of the problem, the answer you're going to get, because I have two fractions. I would have to convert that into one fraction, and I guess it probably will give you the same answer. Prove me right or prove me wrong for your extra credit, okay? I'm not going to want to do that with the rules. All right. Uh, this one, I'll just keep it the same way and do P prime is du over u, so the derivative of sine of x squared would be cosine of x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. There's a chain rule. All over itself, sine of x squared times the natural log of 2. Now, the cosine over sine is cotangent of x squared. I still have the 2x right here. Here's something I found on the web. According to Vigis.com, a square is a four-sided polygon whose all its sides are equal in length and opposite sides are parallel to each other. That is really scary that Alexa is always listening. Over. Natural log of 2. She doesn't even know what I'm doing. I was going to give a slam to her, but I won't. I'll be nice. She helps me sometimes. I hope this is the last one. Okay. I mean, I won't even do it. I'm tired. Uh, what values of x will the graph of h have a tangent line whose slope is 5 halves? This time I'm not doing normal. I'm just doing the slope of the tangent. And I got to set that derivative equal to 5 halves. All right, so let's see. What value is x? So let's see. Uh, h prime of x. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me uh, let me do this smarter, not harder. I don't want to do I don't want to do quotient rule. So let me take h and write it as log base two of x 
minus log base 2 of 2 x plus 1. You know, it's good to know that pre-calculus come in handy. H prime now would be du over u, 1 over x, natural log of 2, minus 2 over 2x plus 1, natural log of 2. Unfortunately, though, I'm going to have to convert this into one fraction in order to set it equal to a number. So I'm going to have to use the old... Da, 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 so I get 2x plus 1, natural log of 2, minus 2x natural log of 2, all over uh, x times 2x plus 1 times natural log of 2 squared. Which means I could get rid of the natural log of 2 and get rid of one of them here, one here, and one here. So that turns into equals to 2x plus 1 minus 2x. Interesting. 2x plus 1 minus 2x just gives me a 1, if I did it right, over uh, x times 2x plus 1 ln of 2. Okay. S that's my derivative if I'm right. If I'm wrong, send me a message. Show me the co complete solution. Be the first one from A day. Be the first one from B day. I'll give you, make it worth your while. He wants me to set that equal to 5 halves. So 2 times 1, if I go to the cross multiply, equals to 5 times x, oh, 5 times x, times 2x plus 1, natural log of 2. 2 equals to... 5 times x is 5x times 2x is 10x squared plus 5x. I'm going to divide both sides by natural log of 2. And yikes. I don't think I want to finish it because it's, it's going to have to. If I did it right, I'm going to double check it. Maybe I should have done it the old way to see if I get the same answer. But it's a quadratic. In order to solve a quadratic, you have to take everything and put it on one side, set it equal to zero, use your calculator. But I don't know if I'm right. So what I'm going to do is this. Do it again with just leave it as log base 2 of x over 2 plus 1 and do it that way. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I get somewhere around the same h prime would be uh, the derivative of the inside. So that's good over, over itself. So quotient rule, the bottom times you're the top, 1, minus the top times you're the bottom, which is a 2, so it's going to be a 2. I mean, the, the, the bottom, 2x times 1, minus x times the derivative of the bottom, so it's going to be 2x, all over 2x minus 1 squared, all squared, all divided by itself, x over 2x, is it minus 1 or plus 1? It's a plus 1, anyway. 2x plus 1 divided by itself. Then, uh, divided by the natural log of 2. Natural log of 2. Well, actually, where's the divide? It's going to be ugly. So that cleans up to... Not very excited about this problem. The numerator, 2x plus 1 minus 2x, still gives me the 1. I'm still with the 2x plus 1 squared. Then this, these two, 
the, this fraction pretty much take the reciprocal, and so on top, I end up having a 2x plus 1 and an ln of 2, and the bottom has the x. All right, is that close to any? Okay, the 2x plus 1 cancels in one of these, so I'm left with the natural log of 2 over 2x plus 1 times the x. Uh, still a quadratic, but it looks nicer. Let me see here. 1 over 2x plus 1 squared times 2x plus 1 over 2 over x. Yeah, so that gives me ln of 2 over 2x plus 1. turns into ln of 2 over 2x squared plus x. Set that equal to 5 halves. 2 ln of 2 equals to 10x squared plus 5x. Ten, it's the same. It's going to be the same. There's my 2 minus 2 ln of 2. Well, that's a little different there. One slight difference. I'm not sure what the deal is. I'm going to let you play with it. Either way, whichever part you agree with, calculate our answer most likely. And uh, you have the rest of the week. Because I'm tired. Oh, it is. Again, to finish this, this homework. Again, either print these pages out or just do your own notebook paper. I'm good. Okay. Thanks a lot. I do hope to see everybody on Monday. I do miss you guys.